Hello everybody, it's Kanan, and welcome back to Stardew Valley. Um, it's been a while, so I figured, hey, why not, oh, why not, uh, do a quick episode. This one probably won't be as long as the ones I've done in the past, but, uh, yeah, so... Save up a little bit more and buy a couple of more chickens. <laughs> I wonder if I can finally harvest them. I have no idea how you harvest these. Oh! Okay. Can I sell this? I think it's funny, this is like, what, my, I think my second episode? Oops. Alright. And I'm only at the end of summer. <laughs> it's kind of sad. <laughs> but these kind of games, I think you've got to take your time. So I have definitely got a funny story for you all. This is a story about how I was 100% sure I was going to get fired. <laughs> now this job I worked at, I think I was in my early 20s. Um, I was at least 21. I was old enough to drink, I'll just say that. And well, me and my manager that day. I'm still friends with this manager to this day. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to name the place where it was. Uh, plus, it was at least ten years ago. So, so I used to have a little bit more of a wild streak in me. <laughs> so, me and my manager were drinking on the job. This was a retail position family-owned place, um, <laughs> and me and the manager were just two friends of the family, and, uh, <laughs> oh, they know about it now, but God, if they had found out about that day, anyway, uh, the owner had called and said, hey, I need you to bring me a couple of products that I'm going to show to a potential buyer. And oh boy, we uh, we freaked out because we were both stone cold drunk. And he told him, oh, "Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll send Canaan." And I'm like, "Oh no, I'm in no shape to drive. And if if I go, he's gonna tell right off the bat that I am drunk and I am gonna be fired." And so after a small argument. I loaded up the stuff in my truck. Not my truck, my car. I was driving a car at this time. <laughs> and I went on. I probably went about 20 miles an hour. But the good thing was, it was a kind of, like, it was not a short drive. It was about 30 minutes. And I already, you know, kind of to, to cover my ass a little bit. I uh, called and said, hey, I, I'll be a little late. Traffic, all that. He's like, that's fine. Just take your time. So I stopped, I can't remember where it was, it might have been a McDonald's or something like that, and I ordered like a couple of burgers, a coffee, some more food, like fries, stuff like that. I was like, I have got to at least try and sober up a little bit before I get there, and so I ate all that, 
chug down the coffee and continue to drop slow. <laughs> I felt like I was sobering up enough, so I get to the place, see the owner, and I'm just like, I feel like shit. Okay, so put on a happy face, you know, unload the stuff, go and stuff. He introduces me to this buyer and all that, and he's like, oh, no, just don't, don't make me stay longer than I have to, and told me to go on, and I got back to the store all right, and <laughs> I never drink on the job again. I was so, so terrified. Um, so, yeah. Don't drink while you're at work. It's not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Uh, so, yeah. That was a very interesting day at the office. Um, one of the worst things I've, I've ever done. Um, but like I said, I was younger. I, a little bit during my... Uh, Wilder days, but boy, yeah. I'll take that. Six cream slimes, I'll take that. <laughs> Give me a little extra money, but uh, boy, that was that. Another true story. This one has to do with ghostesses. Um. God, how long ago was this? What year was it? I want to say around 2010. But I'm not 100% sure. But, um. My uh, grandfather, on my mom's side, who I res wasn't really close with, um, was in the hospital. And it, it was pretty much the end, you know. And I wasn't close to him. He was not really that good of a person. So, you know, I didn't go. And I also, I do not like hospitals. Hospitals freak me out. Especially when it's in that kind of situation, that, that someone's on the verge of passing away. It just, it scares me, it freaks me out. Um, the only time I've been in a hospital and been, like, okay with being there, like, if it was a family member or a friend who was, um, why did I do that? That was like, um recovering from a surgery or you know someone had just given birth stuff like that I can deal with because it's like it's not a life or death situation but if someone's real sick or you know it's it's getting to where it's something very very bad like that I don't like being there it's not that I don't care it's just that my anxiety and things like that. So I keep on pushing the wrong button. Um, so yeah, my grandfather on my mom's side is in the hospital, pretty much on the verge of passing away. Well, my youngest nephew my brother's youngest was here at the house with me. Well, not this place. But, um, was at the house that I was staying in at the time. Because he, he didn't want to go. Like, it's not that he felt uncomfortable, he just didn't want to go. Simple as that. And we were here at the house and, like, it was a really rainy night. It, like, it was raining, there was a little bit of thunder, nothing much, you know, it was just creepy. And we were getting bored. And I was like, hey, let's let's go to Walmart. You know, because that's that's what everybody does when they get bored is they go to Walmart. 
to kill time. So we get we get we go outside, we get in my car, I'm pulling out of the driveway and we pass by the house as we're leaving and he says he saw someone standing in the window. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, now my, my parents' house is haunted, but The thing was, is the reason why I didn't believe him is because he was a, he's a jokester. He's a prankster. And he's also kind of a chicken. And so I was like, yeah, if you saw someone standing in the window, you would be free. Ooh. Leather boots. Well, thank you very much. I need to equip those. There we go. Okay. Um. Ooh, we're getting into a jungle. I I am so sorry. I don't know why I keep on pressing the wrong button. Um. Anyway, we go to Walmart. I don't even remember if we bought anything or we, or if we just walked around. But usually if you're bored and you go to Walmart and you're not going to shop or something like that, yeah, you, you tend to just go walk around, kill some time. But then again, I'm kind of an impulse shopper. I can go somewhere and not be planning to buy anything and, and end up finding something and buying it. Um, what is this sound? I got Diglett chasing me. So, we left, we came home, and, oh, it it's way later than I thought it was. Um, okay, I talked well. Now I'll have to wait till tomorrow. Um, came home, it really started storming bad, like thunder, lightning, and all that. And my... Mom calls me and tells me, you know, that... Really, dude? Going through people's garbage? Seriously? Huh. Sounds like those raccoons are back again. Filthy varmints. Do an old man a favor and could you go around the corner and scare off those raccoons for me? They've been causing a real mess. Thanks, make sure you give them a good scare so they never come back. And of course, you're gonna. Yep. Aww. It's still in the garbage. Yes, it's disgusting. Not really, but you should really make some changes. Poor guy. But he just goes right back to looking at somebody else's trash. Ta. 
Oh, he's shaking. Tall. Zucchini fritters? Really? Spicy marinara. Zucchini fritters with spicy marinara. I don't know about that. Anyway. Um, and he was like, hey, let's ghost hunt. <laughs> um, because th this was that time when ghost hunting shows were all the rage. And I'll admit, I, I, did, a, I did do a little bit of ghost hunting around the house uh, when I was younger. Uh, I had a video camera, had night vision stuff, I had a tape recorder, all that stuff. So I was like, all right, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's see what we can find. You know, I didn't think much about it. You know, he, I was like, he just wants to do it because he's bored. Meow. <coughs> so turn off all the lights, get everything set up. And, uh, well, actually, before I even turned off the lights, I took some pictures first. And... I didn't notice at the time, but every picture, like after I went back and looked, hey, okay. wait, what month is it? I thought I was already in summer. This sounds like summer music. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. In every photo... Why can't I pick the egg up? Oh, man. Duh. Um, in every photo, there was a dark shadow in every photo. But, like I said, I didn't realize that until... We'll look back at it later. So we're doing it and nothing happens, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. So we stop, you know, I turn the lights off, off back on. Well, we get word that he's passed away. And, you know, I you know, I told him, you know, he reacted. Didn't you know, he didn't know him that well. Either. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was on the line that that sucks, because he, he was a young kid. At that time, he was like in middle school or something like that, and that was just his reaction. Oh, that sucks, you know. Um, so I went in my room. I got to play a video game or something, and he screams for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, what now? I get up, go in there, and he's like, freaking out. His eyes are wide and his mouth is agape. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? And he goes, the door just shut all by itself. Okay, so in my parents' house, in the living room, like if you walked from my room, there was the TV, the, there was a love seat, there was a, love, a couch and a love seat against the wall, then the corner was a recliner. And right beside the recliner was the front door to the house. Even though we didn't really use it as the front door. Um, during the summer, we would open it. And because <laughs> there was a um, storm door on the other side. You know, just during the summer, you know, so you could see outside and the warmth of outside coming into the house. And that night, he was sitting in the recliner right next to that door. And... Uh, he said that while he was sitting there, the door just shut. And I was like, "Oh, you're just, you know, I don't believe you. Because he could have easily just reached over, shut it himself. Well, okay. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, I didn't believe him. So my parents come home after all that, and he spent the night that night, and he's just freaked out, like wanting to sleep in the same bed as me. I was like, you ain't sleeping in the bed with me. So, we're laying there. We go to bed. We're laying there in the dark. Only thing you can hear is my phone. My phone. My fan. And there's this noise. This, mm, sound like that. And he flips out. He's like, oh my God, Kanan, what was that? I was like, it was the heat kicking on. And that's what it was. Every time the heat kicked on in my parents' house, it made this weird noise. I was like, it's just the heat kicking on. Go to sleep. So, next day, I'm told he's going to spend the night again. I'm like, great. So, he's like, let's, uh, let's go ghost hunt out in the barn. Why in the barn? There's nothing out there in the barn. The only reason why he thought there was something in the barn is because the people who lived in the house my parents lived in uh, before us, um, the man had passed away and for some reason she had his ashes scattered behind the barn. I don't know why. That's all I was told. That happened. Don't know why. So he was 100% convinced that the barn was haunted. I was like, okay. So we get out there, and you know, I set a camera up, and I decided I decided to go up into the loft by myself. And we've got walkie-talkies. <laughs> I'm like, okay, if anything happens, just let me know. So I leave him down there, and I'm uh, I'm up in the loft in the complete dark, all by myself. Which really, in that barn, the most creepiest part was the, uh, the loft. Oh, yeah, that's camera. And I'm up there, and all of a sudden, he's radioing to me. Oh, my gosh, I just heard something beside me. I don't know what it was. And he's like, Kanan, my hand's burning. Why is my hand burning? It's got all this gooey stuff on it. And I'm like, I don't want to know about that. What have you been doing? <laughs> that was my reaction. He's like, shut up. That ain't it. Something's happened. So I come down. And he's And he does. He's got some kind of clear liquid all in his hand. And it's burning. Well, we, we stop. I go inside. And, oh, something else that happened. This is how jumpy he was. Before I went up into the, the loft, um, I was down there with him. I took a picture toward the field um, in the back of the barn, which was where the ashes had been uh, done. And as soon as I snapped the picture, he, like, goes stumbling back and, fall and tr trips over a tire that was laying there and busted his ass in the tire. Like, he literally landed in the tire. I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I just saw a pair of eyes staring at me. And I'm like, it's like the flash probably messed with your eyes, you idiot. So, <laughs> yeah, that happened. And then we went into a compartment of the barn and there was a bird inside of it and it started flapping its wings and I'm scared to death of birds. It's a childhood trauma. I'll tell you all about it some other time. <laughs> But I ran out of there, and he ran out of there. Like, like he ran faster out of there than I did. And all of a sudden, he claims that he's scared of birds as well. I don't know why. But anyway, the whole clear, gooey stuff on his hand happened. I go back and watch the, fo the video. And as he was walking by the box that powered the electric fence, you do hear a sound. It was like a like a short circuit like sound and I'm I'm guessing there was some kind of I don't know how to explain it like maybe a circuit in it shorted right as he walked by and in the video you can see him he's walking then you hear the sound he's like like he jumped like no other and that's when he started talking about 
his hand burning. I was like, well, unless a ghost puked ectoplasm on him or something, then I don't know what it could be. And then I checked the walkie-talkie that he was holding, and yeah, it was battery acid. The batteries were leaking in the walkie-talkie, so he got battery acid all over his hand. So it might have been the walkie-talkie that short-circuited and made that sound. I don't know, and it just sounded like it came from beside him. But yeah, that little ghost hunt, there was very little ghosts and just a lot of comedy of errors. Um, I've never had a ghost, I never went on a ghost hunt that was that comical until that happened. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm never taking you ghost hunting again. Because <laughs> he was just, he was too panicky. Um, really, the only ones like, like, and tell you the truth, the ones who I could ghost hunt with and it actually go right because they were actually interested in doing it was my two nieces. Um, and all my stories about the two nephews that I did stuff with, this was their little sisters. They were born in about 2000, which they're grown up now. You know, they, they, they live on their own. One of them just got engaged and all that. So, um... So when they were younger, they loved the, and like, oh, because I didn't feed you. I thought if you let them outside, they pretty much ate themselves. Oh, that's a, that sucks. No eggs for me. Oh, well, we will leave it tomorrow. Um, I need to go get me some seeds. But they love, and my nieces, they were, they were unlike any other. They loved Godzilla. They loved horror movies. Like, for the longest time, they would come over and they'd say, let's watch Freddy Krueger, you know, and stuff like that. Um, so they were all into ghost hunting. Unlike somebody. <laughs> um, yeah, it is summer. I thought I was already in summer. What's the next? The Luau. Okay. But, um, they would ghost hunt with me all the, all the time. And I kind of miss those days. I, I, I miss when they were younger. Because, you know, when, once they get older, they lose interest and stuff like that. And they start to not come around as much anymore. Because, you know, they're older. They've got their own stuff to do. But, you know, I'm still a big kid. I always will be. I like the paranormal. If you if you haven't watched our show, Mysterious Darkness, you'll learn that I love paranormal stuff. I love creepy stuff. Which me and Jess need to do a new episode at some point. That, that show's been on hiatus long enough. But real quick story about ghost hunting with my nieces. Um... When they were younger, one of them was more of a tomboy, the other one was more of a girly girl, and as they got older, they switched, they swapped. The one that used to be the tomboy is now the girly girl, and the one that used to be the girly girl is now a tomboy. But, um, let's call the one that's a tomboy now R, and the other one H. R was all into the ghost hunting, but when we actually ghost hunt, she was a chicken. She, uh, I keep pushing that wrong button. But when it came to actually ghost hunting, she was a chicken. One little thing ha happened, and she would be flipping out. H was indifferent to it. Like, she liked doing it, but she didn't get panicked. So, while I was still in college, I quit my job at a pizza place. I used to work for Pizza Plus 
for like a year. And it just wasn't, you know, it just was not a good, it was just not a good job. Um, barely got any hours because I was in college and it just, you know. Um, but because of that job, I can make a mean pizza, trust me. And... Ugh, I should have bought more. I think I will go buy more. Um, so after I quit the pizza job, I needed a job for at least the summer. Because, you know, during college, you would get your financial aid and you'd be set for, um, you know, for a while. Because, you know, whatever you didn't use of it, it it's your money. Um, <laughs> so, my sister asked me if I would babysit the girls. Easy job. And uh, the very first day I sub, I sub, babysat for them, we decided to ghost them because they believed their house was haunted. Well, it was still in broad daylight, so we couldn't get like a real creepy feel. Um, and, you know, they wanted it dark and creepy and all that. So. We went into one of the, uh, the oldest of uh, them, you know, the older brother. We went to his room because his room was pretty much in the in the basement. There was no windows. You turn the lights off in that room, it was pitch black dark. Like, if you woke up, like, let's say you slept until noon. If you woke up, you wouldn't know it was daylight or nighttime outside. It was that dark. I would have loved to have had that room. I've always wanted a basement room. Um, so, you know, I, I had brought my video camera and uh, turned out the lights. I put the night vision on and we just sat around. And I think I still have the, the videotape to this day, actually. And, um, yeah, we just sat around, asked questions like you always do, see so if, you know, make a noise, you know, and stuff like that. Nothing happened. Nothing was going on. I do believe their house was haunted, though, because it... I don't know. It was just a really, really creepy house. And we're sitting there. Nothing's going on until we hear a bang. A very loud bang. And R goes, Oh my gosh! And I went... <laughs> like, I... I had a feeling I knew what it was. So I was like, oh, oh no! Uh, like, what was that? And it turns out it was, it was my sister coming home. So, uh, so it was not a ghost, but it was funny because she got so scared. Like, I even, I was, uh, I was holding the camera. And I had closed up on her because she was already freaking out. She was like, just looking around, even though you couldn't see pitch black dark in there. And when that happened, I was closed up on her face and she just went, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know why she ever bothered ghost hunting because she just couldn't take it. Um, one more quick story on her. Um, this is back when, oh man, this has been a couple of years ago. Um, I used to have PlayStation VR, and, um, the biggest reason why I wanted PlayStation VR was because of, <clears throat> um, Resident Evil 7, and a buddy of mine sold me his for, like, 150 bucks, which, hey, that, that was cheap for, uh, let me go see if I can buy some, a couple more chickens, that was cheap for a VR, and it was the version that only came with the headset or the, you know, the visor plus the thing. It didn't come with the sticks. That's pretty much the only thing it didn't come with. It was the cheaper version. So I bought it off of them that very day, cash money. And, um, took it home, you know. And I will say about PlayStation VR, it's very fun. But my gosh, is that thing a bitch to set up. 
all the cords and just at that time I didn't have I didn't have a good enough room to fit it anywhere, so I couldn't keep it out and keep it set up 24/7. I always had to set it up then take it back down. Well, she just so happened to come over one day. This is when she's old enough to be driving and all that and I was playing Resident Evil 7 on VR. And she was just blown away. She's like, oh my gosh, you got the VR, blah, 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 and all that. I was like, yeah, you want to try it out? She's like, yeah. she's like, well, what are you playing on? I said, Resident Evil 7, it's a scary game. And you know her, she loves scary stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to play. It's like, all right. And I was at the part where Ethan is, it's still early in the game. And it's the part where Ethan goes into the bathroom of the Baker house. And then when, when he leaves, Jack attacks him. Jack grabs him uh, by the uh, throat. It's pretty much um, the, encount- the first encounter you have with Jack after facing off against him in the garage. And I knew it was coming. And uh, I put it on her. And since I didn't have, you know, I gave her the controller and I told her to move her head, to look around, you know. And I was so scared. I I wish I'd filmed it, but I was like, okay, I'm going to set her up for this jump scare. I just, please don't let her throw either my controller or the headset. I was like, all right, you think you got the control? She was like, yeah. I was like, okay, go to that door and uh, let's leave the room. (laughs) She did. She opened that door, Jack popped out and grabbed Ethan by the neck, and she went, Oh my gosh! <laughs> she didn't throw my controller or my headset, but or my, you know, the visor, but, oh, it was funny. It was so darn funny. Oh, man. Uh, my family, they're, they're a bunch of hoots. She's also the only one that I've (laughs) scared so bad that she literally screamed at the top of her lungs, jumped up in the air, and did a complete circle in the air and ran the other way. (laughs) Let's go to bed. What was that? That sounded like the demons of the underworld. What the heck was that? What? This is Stardew Valley. This isn't a horror game. What the heck was that? I'm a little freaked out. Okay. Okay, it was an earthquake. Okay. All right. I like that music. All right, guys. I'm going to end it here. Didn't get much done, but hey, that's just how it goes. There's not really much I can do right now in the game. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button because it really, really helps. Leave me a comment. If there's anything else you guys want to see me play, please leave me a comment, whether it be a horror game or a non-horror game. Um, as always, guys, this is Kanan. Please remember me and Jess love you all very much. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.